Welcome to Telluman Insights, where we reveal the hidden forces that shape the way you live and show you how to use them to create real transformation and supercharge your health, mindset, and daily life. Here are your hosts, Emma Greenwood and Nathan Sinclair. Welcome back to Tea Lumen Insights, where we like to take these deep dives into some really fascinating ideas. Yeah, super interesting stuff. And today is no exception. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're tackling a question that might make some people a little uncomfortable. Uh, is humanity as we know it coming to an end? Ooh, that's a big one. It is a big one. And, and could the very things that connect us and empower us, technology, the internet, even certain philosophies, be the tools of our own undoing? It's a chilling thought, isn't it? But it's not some doomsday prophecy. We're diving into James Tunney's book, AI Posthumanism, a mythic soap opera. Yeah. Tunney argues that we're in the middle of a profound shift, one that's moving us away from human-centered values towards something else entirely. He uses this really interesting term, homo ludens. Oh, yeah. Humans defined by games. Right. He suggests that we're all players in this massive global game. The game. But it's not about land or resources, you know, conquering territory or anything like that. Yeah. This game's about something far more sinister control of human consciousness. Now, that's where it gets really unsettling. Tunney argues that the very concept of humanism that belief system that puts humans and our values at the center is being deliberately narrowed and weakened. Oh, wow. So it's like someone's chipping away at the foundation. Yeah, exactly. Making it easier to then argue for the superiority of machines or AI. Right. Now, hold on a second. Doesn't humanism have all kinds of different interpretations? Yeah. You're right. I mean, how can anyone manipulate such a broad concept? You're absolutely right. Humanism is multifaceted. And Tunney points that out. He says the posthumanists are presenting a very selective, almost distorted view of humanism. They focus on a purely materialistic interpretation that's easier to dismantle. Oh, so it's like setting up a straw man just to knock it down. Exactly. That's what's happening here. They're rigging the game. Precisely. And to illustrate this manipulation, Tunney brings up a fascinating debate between B.F. Skinner and Karl Popper, mm. both considered humanists, yet holding vastly different views. <laughs> Skinner, known for his behaviorist theories, believed human behavior could be controlled through conditioning. Right, right. Popper completely rejected that deterministic view. Yeah. He championed human free will and the vital importance of critical thinking. Interesting. So even within humanism. Yeah. You have this tension. This inherent tension exists, this struggle to define what it truly means to be human. And it's this tension that the post-humanists are exploiting. Exactly. Okay, so we've got this grand game for control of consciousness, and the playing field is being tilted by manipulating the very definition of what it means to be human. Right. But how does this lead to the end of humanity as we know it? Right. Are we talking about robots rising up and taking over? It's not about a Hollywood-style robot apocalypse. It's far more insidious. Tunney argues that by reducing and despiritualizing the concept of human, we pave the way for the supposed superiority of machine consciousness. I see. It's as if we're dismantling our own house brick by brick and handing the materials to someone else to build something entirely new. He doesn't just throw out these ideas without backing them up, right? No, no. What kind of evidence does he present for this despiritualization process? He uses them powerful examples. He talks about ectogenesis, the development of artificial wombs. Okay. Often touted as a feminist ideal, a way to liberate women from pregnancy. Right. But Tunney points out a chilling parallel. It echoes dystopian predictions like Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. Hmm. We're talking about a technology that could sever the biological connection between mother and child, reducing human experience to a series of controllable processes. Wow, that's a disturbing thought. It's yeah. like we're taking something beautiful and natural, the miracle of birth, and turning it into a sterile, mechanized procedure. Right. It's almost as if we're trying to eliminate the human element altogether. Exactly, and it doesn't stop there. He also points a finger at academia. Academia. Suggesting that even universities often unknowingly are playing a part in this grand scheme. Wait, universities? Yeah. Aren't they supposed to be bastions of free thought and critical thinking? That's the irony. Tunney argues that much of academia has been co-opted, often unwittingly, to promote these post-humanist ideas. Research and intellectual discourse are increasingly driven by the agendas of the military-industrial complex, a system that thrives on control and manipulation. Mm -hmm. It's a system that benefits from a despiritualized, easily controlled populace. This all sounds very conspiracy theory-ish. Yeah. Is Tunney suggesting that there's some shadowy group 
pulling the strings, orchestrating all of this. He doesn't go that far. He doesn't posit a centralized evil mastermind, but he does highlight a disturbing convergence of interests. Okay. A system that rewards those who promote a worldview that diminishes human agency and elevates technology and artificial intelligence above all else. So where does this greatest game fit into all of this? Is this where the real world power dynamics come into play? Exactly. Tunney draws a chilling parallel between the British Empire's great game in the 1800s, a geopolitical struggle for dominance in Central Asia, and the current game, which targets the human mind itself. So instead of armies and empires, yeah. the battleground is our thoughts. Our beliefs. It's about control, but not through armies and empires this time. The battleground is our thoughts, our beliefs, our very perception of reality. So how are they playing this game? What are their weapons? Technology, of course, we're talking about neuro-lace brain-computer interfaces being developed by people like Elon Musk and nanotechnology operating at a molecular level with the potential to manipulate our biology. Wow. Even seemingly benign scientific advancements like Jax or Fatty's research on microtubules, tiny structures within cells, could be twisted for mind control. Imagine a world where your thoughts, your emotions, your very sense of self could be manipulated by external forces. That's the terrifying potential of this game. Yeah. This is all starting to feel a bit overwhelming. It's one thing to talk about philosophical concepts, but when you start talking about real world technologies and their potential for manipulation, it gets a lot more real, a lot more frightening. It's a sobering reality, no doubt, but understanding the potential threats is the first step towards resisting them. That's a good point. But one thing that struck me in Tunney's work is his bewilderment at the lack of resistance from humanity. He even draws a contrast with his own family's history of fighting for Irish freedom, highlighting a stark difference in spirit. It's almost as if we're sleepwalking into our own demise, passively accepting this erosion of our humanity. Right. Why aren't we fighting back? That's the unsettling question, isn't it? Why are we so seemingly passive? Tunney explores several potential explanations, and they're all deeply disturbing. Well, let's hear them. What are these potential explanations for our collective apathy? Well, Tunney first points to the numbing effect of media and entertainment. We're constantly bombarded with distractions, information overloads superficial stimuli, right. all of which desensitize us to real threats and erode our capacity for critical thinking. Yeah, it's like we're being lulled into this state of complacent acceptance. Exactly. I mean, how many times have you scrolled through social media for hours and felt completely drained and just disconnected afterward? Yeah. It's as if our attention spans are being systematically fragmented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Leaving us unable to focus on the bigger picture. Exactly. And then there's the deliberate demoralization and dispiritedness of society. But, Think about it. We're constantly told that things are bad. The world is falling apart. We're powerless to change anything. Right. This creates a sense of hopelessness and apathy, making us less likely to resist even when our very humanity is at stake. It's a vicious cycle. The more we believe we're powerless, the more powerless we become. We surrender our agency, our ability to shape our own destiny. Precisely. And finally, there's the deliberate attack on traditional institutions like family and religion. Mm. These institutions, for all their flaws, provided a sense of community, meaning moral guidance. Right. As they're weakened and eroded, individuals become more isolated, more vulnerable to manipulation, right. and more likely to see meaning and purpose in ideologies that may not have their best interests at heart. So we're isolated, demoralized, and constantly distracted. It's a perfect recipe for control. Mm. But Tunney doesn't just lament our passivity. He actually introduces this chilling term for this state of being. Yeah. Ghost hosts. It's a powerful image, isn't it? Right. He uses it to describe a situation where the original inhabitants of a place or culture are erased. Okay. Replaced by a hollowed out version controlled by external forces. Think of a beautiful old building stripped of its soul, its history, its unique character, and replaced with a sterile, generic facade. Oh, I see. It's still standing, but it's lost its essence. So like a kind of cultural possession. Right. Where the authentic spirit of a people is replaced by something alien, something artificial. Exactly. He draws parallels to the displacement of indigenous populations throughout history. Right. Their cultures erase their identities, subsumed by the dominant culture. Mm. And he suggests that a similar process is happening on a global scale as we surrender our sovereignty, our unique cultural identities, right. to the forces of globalization and technological control. It makes me think of those ghost towns you see in old westerns. Yeah. Empty shells of what were once vibrant communities. And it doesn't just focus on the collective level. He also explores the implications for individual human identity. What happens to us as individuals in this ghost host 
scenario. He suggests that we risk becoming mere specters, shadows of our former selves in a world dominated by artificial intelligence and a hive mind consciousness. Mm. Our individuality, our unique perspectives, our very souls could be subsumed into a collective that's controlled by forces beyond our understanding or control. It's a terrifying thought to lose our individuality, to become mere cogs in a machine, our thoughts and feelings dictated by algorithms and AI. It raises fundamental questions about what it means to be human. Are we just biological machines, our actions predetermined by our genes and our environment, or do we possess a soul, a spirit, a spark of something that transcends the material world? And Tunney obviously believes in the latter. He does. So where do we go from here? Are we doomed to become these ghost hosts? Right. Are humanity extinguished by the forces of technology and control? Or is there a way to resist to reclaim our agency and shape a future that honors our unique human essence? Despite the bleakness of his analysis, Tunney does offer a glimmer of hope. He argues that even in the face of these overwhelming forces, oh, yeah. we still have the ability to choose who we are, how we think, and how we respond to the world around us. That's encouraging. But how do we do that? Huh? How do we reclaim our agency in a world that seems increasingly designed to strip it away? Where do we even begin? Tunney believes it starts with a fundamental shift in perspective. He emphasizes the recognition of our interconnectedness. Remember that powerful analogy of the water molecule? Yeah. Tunney argues that we're all part of a larger whole, a web of life that extends far beyond our individual selves. And this isn't some abstract, feel-good concept. It has real-world implications for how we treat each other, how we interact with our environment, and how we approach the challenges facing humanity. So it's about moving beyond that ego-driven perspective exactly. that often yeah. dominates our thinking. Yeah. It's about recognizing that our actions have consequences, not just for ourselves, but for the entire web of life. Hmm. We need to cultivate empathy, compassion, and a sense of responsibility for the well-being of others, both human and non-human. This reminds me of discussions we've had before about true freedom. Right. It's not just about individual liberty. It's about recognizing our responsibilities to each other and to the planet. Precisely. Tani argues that this sense of interconnectedness is deeply rooted in our spiritual nature. We're not just isolated individuals, we're expressions of a larger consciousness, a universal force that connects us all. That brings up another question. How do we tap into that larger consciousness? Right. How do we cultivate this spiritual awareness that Tani sees as so essential for resisting manipulation and reclaiming our agency? Tunney emphasizes practices like meditation, mindfulness, and contemplation practices that help us connect with our inner selves. Think of it like tuning out the noise of the external world, all the distractions and demands that constantly pull us away from our center. By turning inward, by cultivating stillness and self-awareness, we can access a deeper level of knowing, a wisdom that goes beyond the limits of the purely rational mind. So it's not about rejecting reason or logic. Right. It's about balancing those faculties with a deeper, more intuitive way of knowing. Exactly. Tiny believes our spiritual nature isn't separate from our rational mind. It's an integral part of who we are. And by integrating these different aspects of ourselves, we become more whole, more balanced, and more capable of responding to life's challenges with wisdom and compassion. This all sounds very appealing in theory, but let's be practical for a moment. We live in a world that often feels hostile to these kinds of spiritual values. How do we put these principles into practice in a society obsessed with material success, technological advancement, and individual gratification? It's a valid question. It's a challenge, no doubt. But Tani believes change starts with the individual. He argues that each of us has the power to make choices that align with our spiritual values, even in small ways. It might be choosing to spend time in nature, practicing mindfulness in daily activities, or engaging in acts of kindness and compassion. Small acts multiplied across millions of individuals can create a powerful ripple effect. So it's about making conscious choices moment by moment that reflect our deepest values, mm -hmm. not waiting for some grand revolution, but enacting change in our own lives starting right now. Precisely. And as more individuals make these choices, as we shift our priorities and begin to live from a more spiritually grounded place, it will influence our families, our communities, and eventually the larger society. Change doesn't happen overnight. It's a process, a journey, and it starts with each one of us. This brings us back to resisting manipulation, to reclaiming our agency in a world that often feels like it's spiraling out of control. Mm -hmm. Tunney seems to be saying that our spiritual awakening isn't just about personal fulfillment. It's a form of resistance, a way of pushing back against the forces that seek to dehumanize us. You've hit the nail on the head. It's not about becoming passive or withdrawing from the world. It's about engaging with the world from a place of strength, wisdom, and compassion. 
It's about being a force for positive change, even amidst chaos and uncertainty. I love that idea that our spiritual awakening can be a source of strength and resilience, not a retreat from the world. It's a call to action, an invitation to become active participants in creating a future that honors our humanity and the interconnectedness of all life. It's a message that resonates deeply, especially in these times of rapid change and uncertainty. We all have a choice to make. Will we allow ourselves to be swept along by the currents of fear, division, and dehumanization? Or will we tap into that wellspring of spiritual wisdom within ourselves and become beacons of hope, compassion, and connection? That's the question we'll leave you with today. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into James Tunney's thought-provoking work. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep seeking that spark of the divine within yourselves and in the world around you. And that's it for Teal Lumen Insights. If you enjoyed this deep dive, please share it with others.